Welcome back to Love Bulls News. If you haven't already, make sure you like and sub to the channel as we get into some true crime, y'all. So this one looks really good today. Um, like I said, as always, I do not watch the stories. We watch them together and break them down as we go. So let's do it. 911, where is your emergency? Um, it's like a non-emergency. We want to like report an issue. Who is she? It's my sister. And what is her name? Samira Watkins. Where was the last place you saw her? The last place I seen her was um, Thursday night around 8 o'clock. One of our officers responded to a call of a missing person. Uh, that officer realized that the circumstances of the incident seemed quite a bit fishy and contacted me. So the first thing that caught me is you're saying you want to report a non-emergency. Most people, if they can't find a loved one, it may not, it may be considered a non-emergency to law enforcement, but to you, it's definitely not a non-emergency. You need someone out there. You need people looking for them ASAP. So that kind of struck me a little bit. With the need for an investigation to start immediately. Saturday, October 31st, 2009, Pensacola, Florida. Police detective Jonathan Thacker interviews 911 caller Sylvia Watkins, whose older sister Samira has gone missing. Tell me from the very beginning, uh, everything that has happened that has made, made you concerned about your sister's well-being. Um, Thursday night, she, um, when she got off of work, she came home, and she was getting dressed to go, go to his house. On the night of October 29th, Samira had completed her shift at a local McDonald's restaurant where she was the manager. After that, she came home, changed her clothes, and indicated that she was heading out to meet her boyfriend, Zachary Littleton. Littleton was a 24-year-old member of the United States Navy. <laughs> that man looked 38. He was stationed at the Pensacola Naval Air Station. She was very excited about this guy she met who was in the military. She was looking forward to a future with him. She asked me to drop her off, but I was too tired. I was already in bed asleep. And um, after that, I guess she, that's when she left. So it's around nine o'clock in the in the in the evening. All right, so she drove herself over, and we don't really know where she went, but we, we know that she was saying she was going to go to his house. She asked you to drop her off, but she ended up driving herself. Okay, so it could be that the family has one car, share a car, and she didn't want them to be stranded. But I don't see why someone who has their own car saying, come drop me off. Is that the last time that you've heard her? Her from you. Samira Watkins was a 25-year-old single mom. She was the oldest of five children in her family. She had a child of her own, a little boy of four years old. Uh, she was a manager at a local fast food restaurant, and she uh, was uh, going... So today's the day I've got my art. Worst, Pensacola police contact Florida State Prosecutor Bridget Myers Jensen. I became involved early on in the case because there was such an unusual and suspicious circumstance. Zachary Littleton was initially a suspect and probably the strongest suspect because he found out that Samira was pregnant and he was not happy about the. That is the biggest motive. So, although Everything looked promising for Samira as far as becoming a dental hygienist or a dental assistant. Um, she was still someone that had a child, worked at a fast food restaurant. He may feel like he's above her because he's a Navy SEAL. He's got maybe more things going in his favor at the time. Who knows? We're going to see. Pregnancy. He was also the last person that we knew Samira had been with the night that she went missing. So Detective Thacker gives Littleton a call. Hey, how you doing? Hey, this is Ricky. This is uh, Zachary Littleton. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? He very quickly indicated that he wasn't Ricky, he was Zach. And that was odd. There would be a different name given uh, by the family as to what this actual person's telling me. Hey, uh, you know this young lady, Samira? 
a myriad, it's a myriad. It's, yeah, she said Sammy. That's what, that's what she told me to call her Sammy. He, in fact, didn't even recognize her name at first when he was asked. The fact that he started playing games early on in this case is letting me know he had something to hide. This is along the lines of where everyone's calling her your girlfriend. Even if you don't think you guys are spending a lot of time together. They say her name. You act like you don't even know who the person is. Sammy, Sammy. They said, do you know a Samira? And his response is Samira, Samira, uh, Sammy. She called herself Sammy as if this was a person he had just met. Do you know where she is now? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Look, here's the deal. Um, she she has been reported missing, okay? And at this point, we're, we're investigating her whereabouts. So I need to talk to you and not over the phone. It was obviously important to see what he knew. He was essentially, could have been the last person to see Samira alive. So I asked him to come down for an interview. Okay, all right. You'll have a seat here. You work for the Navy, right? Right. Uh, NAS Police Department. Okay, so you're like a, are you like a, like a, a military police? Okay. Hearing that Zachary Littleton was a military police officer, part of me thought, well, certainly a police officer in the military wouldn't hurt somebody or, or cause them to go missing. I want to hear his explanation for why she's missing and what all he knew. So you've known her for how long then? Sammy. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. It's a few months, not a whole year. When is, when is the last time that you saw Sammy? The last time I seen was Wednesday while I dropped off at home. Have you seen her? Oh, and there we have it. He's definitely withholding information because we all know Thursday night she left, said she was going to his house, got off work, and this is supposedly her boyfriend in her eyes. So, hmm. Anytime since when he dropped her off, no. He indicated that he had never seen Samira on the night of her disappearance on the 29th. And that was odd because she was supposedly going to his house. Did you have any kind of a relationship with Sammy that was more than just friends? No. Whoa. Whoa. You know what? I was hoping there would be a twist. And we still got room for a little twist and turn in this story. But he is coming off strong with the lies. And it's almost like, how could you be a police and think that they don't already know some of the answers to the questions that they're asking you? you gotta keep that a secret because under military rules, you can get disciplined if you commit adultery. I, I want you to know that um, I, I, I'm not the military. I want you to feel free to tell me everything without you worrying about getting in trouble. Okay, we had sex once or twice. You know, it wasn't nothing really a relationship. We were just friends of what I thought it was. So maybe I did some things, I said some things that probably made her believe that we were in a relationship, but I didn't see it that way. When Samira met Zachary, she saw a military member who was very handsome and seemed to have his head on his shoulders and was charming and someone that she fell head over heels for and wanted to build a future with. Sometimes I just catch her staring at me and just, you know, looking at me like she just admired by me so much. That's why I was like, no, nah, man, we can't. We knew from the beginning that you weren't gonna be the one in my life. When investigators asked him about now, what we all know is he did not tell Samira that she wasn't going to be the woman in his life, but let's go. His feelings, Zachary acted cavalier towards a relationship with Samira. Yeah, this was just a fling. Was she depressed acting or anything? I mean, you know, she, she was kind of like having the say a tone to her. But she's like, oh, we need to tell her. Was the conversation centered around her thinking that she was pregnant with your child? No, it was more centered around why we can't spend time together. Was she pregnant? I don't know. So she never came to you and said, hey, this is your baby? And she never actually came out and said that? Oh, it was like the baby was going to be born. Well, I mean, if she really was pregnant, weren't you at all concerned? It would be mine. Right. No. He didn't want any part of this child. He didn't want any 
serious relationship with Samir. After all, he was married, living a double life. He already had a child. And so he tried to encourage Samira to get an abortion. And that was something that Samira did not want to do. She wanted to have the baby. When I asked Littleton about his alibi, for lack of better words, on the night of the 29th, he basically said he was at home all night, that he was moving. Thursday I was out work, and then night I was boxing up and cleaning up stuff. Well, I ain't really clean, I was just boxing up my belongings and stuff. But my wife and my daughter, she'll, they'll be here in, in Friday, the city. He was living in an apartment. So this man is married. He's a married military man. And he is out here leading this girl on to believe she has a boyfriend. All the while, she may not even know he's married. Let's go. Apartment at that time here in Pensacola. And with his wife and his child being stationed within a week here in Pensacola, it just, they had made a decision to leave the apartment and move into a home. They'll be here in... Um... We need a bigger, the apartment just one big enough for uh, a family so we can uh, rent in a house. See, uh... So he said that that night he was packing all night into the wee hours of the morning, getting all the stuff put in boxes and, and things like that so that he could begin to move the next day. Where, where do you think she is? I don't know. I mean, I didn't do it. I would, I would anything, I'm not responsible for her being missed. That's why we here. Do you want to know if I'm... So I don't know if you guys caught it, but he said, if anything, I didn't do it. So for him to imp for him to imply that he didn't do it when no one has said anything has happened to Samira is letting you know that there is something that was done. Because right now they're just investigating a missing person. So what didn't you do? I'm responsible for her being missing. Zachary Littleton seemed a little flippant and not concerned whatsoever as to where Samira may be. Clearly, Littleton doesn't want the affair to come out, but that on its face doesn't mean he's involved in Samira's disappearance, especially since there's another development. Once Littleton had moved out of his apartment and we were able to go and search the apartment to see what was left behind, if there was a crime scene somewhere in Y'all, he done moved out his apartment? Hmm. Hmm. In the apartment, we didn't find anything of obvious concern. We didn't find blood. We didn't find where an obvious struggle had occurred. We didn't feel like it would be prudent to focus solely on him. We began to research uh, Samira's past. And what we learned is that Samira had a, uh, a boyfriend uh, who had just gotten out of prison, actually. A guy by the name of William Peters. William Peters was the father of Samira's four-year-old child. They All right, y'all, we got a surprise suspect. Who is this guy? They had had hey, a very hey. tumultuous relationship, both suspect. physically and mentally. Uh, Mr. Peters was abusive to Samira. At the time that Samira went missing, she did have a restraining order against her child's father, William Peters. So he was someone who was dealing with obviously anger management issues who had some feelings for Samir that were so intense that he committed crimes. And so now Samir goes missing. That's a big break for law enforcement. Could the father of Samira's four-year-old son <laughs> have had something to do with her disappearance? <clears throat> Up next, Detective Thacker pays a visit to William Peter's family. Did you ever hear William say anything? Other, uh, do you know the U.S. Solar Company's nasty little secret? It turns out if you... He was concern uh, for Samira's well-being. In stark contrast to Zachary Littleton, he really didn't show much concern at all. Detective Thacker turns his attention back to Zachary Littleton, the man who was secretly having an affair with Samira and caused her to be pregnant. Thacker brings Littleton in for another interview. Did your wife know that you were talking to this girl? No. Would that be a problem if she knew that? No, because she knew she knew I have a lot of friends, and uh, she didn't know about she don't know about Sam. She don't know their name. I put it like that. She know I talked to a girl. During the course of the interview with Littleton, we talked to him about his cell phones, and he indicated that he had at least two cell phones. And he wasn't really shy as the interview progressed. He wasn't shy to indicate to us that one of those phones was kind of for the girls to call him on. Zachary was known 
on the base as a player, a playboy, someone who had multiple relationships. In fact, later on when he was talking to police, he said that Samir was just one of many extramarital relationships he had. What I learned was that the phone was a, uh, we call a burner phone. Zachary Littleton was using the burner phone to call Samira. And it was uh, the kind of phone that you get at um, maybe a convenience store. It, it, you... Do y'all see how this man has been manipulating this girl the whole entire time? She's thinking she's in a relationship with this guy, doesn't know anything about him being married, and he's not even talking to her on his real phone. He got a burner phone from the corner store. Oh my God. Take it home, you register it online or over the phone, and you don't have to give a lot of information to the companies that, that service those phones. I had two cell phones. I had a um, Boost mobile phone. And uh, she was, that number she used to call me on. I was like, I cut that phone off. Cause the Boost one, she used to call you on that. Mm -hmm. And you, you want you shut it off again? Cause I was getting text messages that didn't want to have nobody call me and harass me by anything. So I cut it off. And he cut it off because Samira was harassing him or calling him about her finding out she was pregnant. So he started trying to ignore her and push her off. Oh, he is something else. Military police, you say. And hearing that just kind of started to build an understanding of the kind of person that that Littleton was. Zachary had a cavalier attitude towards the relationship and the child. In reality, it was always about him. As Littleton talks about Samira, something strikes the detective as odd. I'm trying to recreate this young lady in my mind. I don't know her. All right. And if I can recreate her and kind of get in her head, I might be able to find out where she's at, um, what her demeanor was like. Uh, she was a real calm girl. She wasn't no feisty type, I know. Yeah, she was real. Just calm, you know. I ain't gonna say she was, she was nice. You know, she had she had good tendencies to be a good woman. Okay, you guys, so we are still investigating a missing person. That's what the police are saying. They're trying to figure out where she is. If you notice, she speak, he's speaking about Samira in the past tense. She was a nice girl. She was a calm girl. She was a good woman. What, what do you mean? Why aren't you saying she is? She is. Okay. I feel like that. He used her name in the past tense a lot when he would refer to her, which at that time it was a uh, missing person. Missing persons often are found alive and perfectly fine. In fact, they usually are. And he was already referring to her in the past tense. What do you think happened with her? In what aspect? Where's she at now? I don't know, it's this is on the way to my house. Okay, what do you think though? He asked, the detective said, where is she at now? He said, I don't know. They said she was on her way to my house. They said she was on the way to your house on Thursday. We're days later. He's playing games. There's something here. How much should good car insurance? Okay. Zachary Littleton was stonewalling investigators. She was pregnant and he was trying to protect his family and his. Investigators strongly suspect that person was Zachary Littleton. However, they still have no direct evidence connecting him to the crime. So they call in the big guns, the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, the NCIS. So being that. Listen, y'all, Gibbs is my favorite person in the whole world. I'm just playing, not the whole world. But NCIS was my show. While y'all was watching Law and Order, I was watching NCIS. Our suspect was a member of the United States Navy, uh, Zachary Littleton. Um, and we knew that a lot of our witnesses and the friends that Zachary had were also members of the Navy. Um, we reached out to NCIS uh, to help us out. They'd be able to help facilitate interviews, 
perhaps records of things that, that went on. So I worked closely with NCIS um, during the investigation. Coming up, Detective Thacker interviews Zachary Littleton's friends. Will they lead to a breakthrough? What do you think? Based on what, what you've heard and what we've disclosed oh, to you, what do you think is the most reasonable? Baby mama drama, I mean, you know, he got her pregnant and I know he's married with another child and I know she's coming down soon. Eight thirty ish and he said, Can you be here by nine? But I couldn't get there until nine fifteen. Alright, so you guys arrive at his house and what start what what happens at his house? Uh, we were standing there, we basically made up like a like a game plan on how we want to start moving everything and uh, he backed the truck up and then we start taking the furniture down. But surely he has other things, you know, knickknack things. Clothing. Yes. So I asked him, I was like, Why isn't your clothes packed? And he said, I don't have any luggage. Now, he pulled all his drawers out and he just set them on the side and we didn't move those out. They were, when I left, they were still in his bedroom. While Zach was supposed to be ready, he wasn't. So that kind of messed up his alibi even further that he was indicating to us that he was at home packing all night when in reality, nothing was done. If that seems suspicious, what Littleton did earlier that same morning really raised detectives' eyebrows. We, we did have a friend come forward that said that on the morning of October 30th, so we're talking about the morning after Samira's disappearance, Zach comes to her house at 5 a.m., so very early, and he's um, asking if he can do his laundry over at her house. Is it usual for him to want to come to your house? Y'all need to just take him to jail already. I'm already done with this. This guy is just moving and doing everything that a killer would do after they done did something. He's just moving a little bit smarter because he was a military police, so he's trying to cover his tracks. But guess what? It's people smarter. Your house at four and five in the morning? Did that strike you as a little odd? Yeah, but he said he'd just been packing all night. Did make us feel like he was probably doing that to destroy some sort of evidence or to wash away blood or something along those lines. Littleton's supervisor raises more suspicions about the night Samira went missing. Is there anything that you can think of that or might or be pertinent that you think we should know or something that you might recall that might be important? Um, you know, me being his mentor, I asked him, you know, is he okay? And he said one thing. He said that, yes, yeah, she came over and asked to stay over. And I told her, uh, I don't want her to come over here. So I took her home and I said, took her home, like if he took her home, what happened to a car, stuff like that. What night was he saying that was? The sister said she didn't drop her off, so Samira drove her car, but you took her home. Hmm. That statement directly contradicts what Littleton's been saying, that he last saw Samira on Wednesday. Now, investigators start to put the pieces together. The theory that I have is that Samira made it to Zachary's apartment and whoever killed her or uh, put her in the bag um, likely used her own car to transport her body to that waterway. And it seems Detective Thacker was right on the money. It was several days later that we had a neighbor contact the police to say that they had located a red Ford Taurus. Now that Taurus was parked in a, a driveway and it had been there for several days. So when we got there, we found that, that it was indeed Samira's car. My theory was that after dumping her body, Zachary Littleton also dumped the car and left it there in that driveway. Law enforcement found Zachary Littleton's DNA on the steering wheel of Samira Watkins' car. He had mentioned in one of his interviews that he had never been in her car, much less driven it. So that was a what are we doing here, y'all? I'm about to skip around because I think we all are on the same page. Their cell phones were pinging onto the nearby cell phone towers. And with that information, they're able to track the two of them who were traveling together and also put holes in Zachary Littleton's story about moving and not seeing Samira. We can see plain as day where Samira was at work at her fast food job that she left, that she came down to where she lived. murder, And that was the charge that I went to trial on. When we return, despite all the evidence, 
getting a conviction is not going to be as easy as you might think. Yes, it's not going to be as easy because they can't convict them without reasonable doubt. We need murder weapons. We need witnesses. You have a lot of things that are not adding up. Washing clothes at someone's house, telling your supervisor a different story, Part, her car being parked somewhere else where you said you were never in there, your DNA's in the car, saying that you took her back home. It's, it's so many things that are not adding up. But you can't take somebody to jail for murder based on things just not adding up. You need solid proof. My biggest concern going to trial on this particular case was because it was 100% circumstantial. I really didn't have an eyewitness. I didn't have forensics that directly linked Zachary Littleton to the homicide. I didn't have video surveillance of the homicide itself. So my concern was that it was just so circumstantial. Right back to the Samira Watkins episode in just a minute. But before we do, I want to call out one of our great sponsors of Prime Crime, Morgan and Morgan. America Prosecutors had a really good case. They had the gold hoop earring. That's as close to a smoking gun as you can get in this case. That's direct evidence that he was the one who committed this heinous crime. How did the other gold hoop earring get into Zachary Littleton's apartment unless he was the one who killed her? And then, of course, the cell tower records that show the location of Zachary Littleton and Samira the night she went missing because it put them in the exact same area. And prosecutors have another weapon in their arsenal. Some of the most important pieces of evidence to show the jurors were some searches on Zachary Littleton's computer. These searches included um, how long does it take for a body to decompose, he was looking at searches related to putting a body in a landfill, how to cause a person to have an abortion, uh, does drinking vinegar cause an abortion. He was Googling abortion locations within our city. Those searches. All right. Y'all, we have convicted. If they won't get a conviction, we gonna get a conviction. Zachary definitely harmed Samira. And he harmed Samira because he did not want to have a child with her and she would not get rid of the child because she thought they were together and he didn't properly communicate it to her. So he decided to kill her and think that he was smarter than everyone around and he would be able to orchestrate this murder to the point that he didn't get caught. But guess what, Mr. Zachary, you're not that good. then He'll be in prison for a very long time. He was 24 years old when this happened, and he, um, he's got a lot of life left where he'll have to do it behind bars. How would you categorize her mental state? Did she change when, she, when the revelation occurred that she was pregnant? I think she was okay mentally. She just sent me like some crazy text messages, like why I didn't speak to her in a couple of days, and I had to call her, I mean, what's, your, what's wrong with you? So I believe that Zach All right, thanks for watching with me in the bullpen. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all later.